So here's the rust weather effect where I've applied Mornfang Brown with my airbrush along all the rivets and in all the kind of corner sections and panel joins. As you can see doing it on the rivets and the joins it, it kind of covers the whole tank with lots of rust and highlights the details. It seems a bit over the top however I'm going to knock this back with a highlight of Dawnstone Grey so I'm just going to dry brush the whole tank using my large dry brush um, and that's going to kind of smooth out the colouring and it's going to blend in the orange rust colour even though it's really brown it looks quite orange here it's going to blend that in better with the grey so here's my tank it's um, got the dawnstone highlight on it as you can see just sort of there but what I then did is I've kind of been looking at it and looking at the kind of rust effect that I did which was with Mornfang Brown and I just think it's too bright, it's a, a bit too orangey and um, it basically looks too new in terms of the rust colour and so I compared it with one of my older tanks um, and that's what I've been sort of saying throughout this whole process is to always compare different parts of the tank or compare it with previous models that you've already got to ensure the colour scheme is correct. And to my horror, I realised I've used a wrong, I've used a wrong brown. Um, so my much older models had Rhinox hide down um, for the rust colour, which is much darker. So let me just show you. So these are the two colours. Uh, Rhinox hide is what I should have used, but I've actually been using Mornfang brown. Now it's kind of my own mistake because i I've got a nice little list of all the paints. Um, that I do at all the different stages and I'd actually written the wrong one down which is odd because I've actually painted up several tanks at different times and I've followed those same instructions so how I actually got the wrong colour I don't know. So I've resprayed one of the tanks just to see how it looks in the correct colour scheme as you can see it's a lot darker. Now the downside of it is, is I've ended up sort of painting more of the tank the brown colour than I would like but on the plus side is you get a nicer kind of two-tone colour scheme going on with the rust. So as you can see there's a bit of a two-tone colour effect. For example just here you can see a bit of a Mornfang brown underneath the Rhinox hide. So in a way that's a bit of a plus and I quite like that. The downside is I've kind of painted more of the grey than I would have liked because I've kind of overcompensated and covering up the brown. However, this isn't too much of a problem, I don't think, because at later stages I'm going to um, cover up some of this brown. So the next step will be to do some weathering and that's going to chip away and sort of hide some of the brown. And then when I do washes, which will be kind of washing around the recesses of the rivets, that is going to kind of hide some of that brown colour anyway. So it's not the end of the world. And overall, having the kind of darker brown works actually a lot nicer than the lighter brown. Let me just do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can sort of see the two. So here's the two tanks stacked on top of each other. You can see the real colour difference. The one below with the Mornfang looks really bright and orange. The one above with the Rhinox hide looks a bit more dark and grim and you can tell that the colour blends in much better with the grey of the base colour. So it sort of fits in so much more as part of the kind of overall colour scheme of the tank even though it's a kind of a rust effect rather than part of the kind of camo scheme. So I'm going to go off and finish off the rest of these tanks going back to the Rhinox hide. So you could if you want do this same process and do kind of both colours to get this slight two-tone colour scheme in the rust it's a bit of extra effort um, it's probably not really needed but it's kind of a happy accident that I'm kind of happy to live with. So these weathering effects are quite over the top. They're really suited for tanks that have been in service for a long period of time or if you're a Chaos Renegade player that would suit you perfectly having like a battered old wreck. As a Krieg player I think it sort of works fine because obviously their tanks go into long years of service. And the Siege of Rax lasted for absolutely ages. So if you wanted a kind of a brand new tank look I would perhaps use this a bit sparingly, I wouldn't do it as much as I have. Um, you could obviously just apply the kind of airbrushing to a few little places here and there just to highlight a few areas of rust.
So I've just finished with the dry brushing of the Dawnstone. I used my large GW brush and I kind of applied a very light uh, coating all over, um, making sure I sort of went against the edges here just to um, pick them up. You don't want to kind of go across like this because um, what you'll do is you end up painting um, the actual surface here. So especially you wanted to highlight the rivets so that gives it a bit more of a grey colour than the brown that I had sprayed on. So that will restore the rivets to its sort of more naturally correct colour of the grey while still allowing the brown to sit on the main flat surface beneath. So the next step is to weather the tank. There's a really simple sponge based method that I'm going to use. Uh, so for that I actually need some tank foam. So here is some tank foam. This comes from the GW cases or similar where it had kind of blocks of foam that you could then just pull apart to create the right shape for your tank. Um, so these spare bits are the bits that come out that you don't need and they're actually really handy for weathering the tank. I tend to pluck just a small bit off and work with that. So I've got my Rhinox hide and my black I'm going to sort of mix that together but not fully so I'm going to have a mixture of the brown and the black and I'm going to just apply a very small amount to sort of this sort of section here the tip of the sponge and then I'm going to lightly dab it on and I'm just going to use it to kind of highlight and pick out these edges. The thing to note when doing weathering is you need to sort of think about which section you're going to weather don't just do everywhere because that will be too over the top have it if you're a renegade or a traitor legion then maybe that will suit you. So when you're weathering the tank there's no point kind of going overboard and weathering absolutely everywhere. You should be concentrating on areas where the tank gets most use and if you think about it where things might kind of impact into the tank or things will be constantly rubbing. So for example the handles will get worn away quite a lot as will the kind of edges of the doors where they kind of join together. Likewise, just down here. Um, and again, for the kind of back door, this section is likely to be weathered because as the door flips down, it's going to impact on the ground. So this little kind of recess and these little sections are most likely to get kind of chipped away more. And again, you're likely to chip away the front part of the tank because as it's kind of going over things, impacting into kind of barricades and other vehicles, it's likely to get damaged along here. But kind of other areas such as these dome bits are unlikely to need weathering because they're likely to be more protected from the elements. So I finished with the weathering. I kind of deliberately kept my two paints separately. So I used Rhinox Hide and Abaddon Black. Uh, in the middle I sort of merged the two together so when I was um, applying it with the sponge, the sponge would get a nice mix of kind of black, brown and a little bit in between. So I concentrated the majority of my weathering along the front section because obviously this is where it's going to get lots of impact from dirt and mud and other debris flying off the bulldozer. So I kind of chipped these sections here just along the edges. And I also highlighted other bits like the little handle just there. I then made sure to do quite a bit around the bottom section as well because that's the bit that's going to be in contact with the ground. So along the front I try to just use it along the edges so this corner here and up here and these little bits dotted around and likewise with the turret. From the top you can see I concentrated mostly just on the kind of handles and the door and again down on that part. I tried not to do too much of say the las guns or kind of these kind of large flat areas but occasionally I would dab it just on the flat areas just to help break up that grey. Again, on the rear I kind of concentrated at the bottom where it'd be going over the ground along with the track guard sections where mud might be coming off. And as I mentioned earlier, this section of the door panel which would impact with the ground when it comes down. So, as you can see, it's quite a subtle effect. I didn't want to go too heavy on the weathering, especially since I'd done quite a bit on the browning of the rivets. So if you wanted, you could now go on and use some silver and do the same effect, kind of building up on the areas that you've already done. And that would give you the effect that it's chipped back to the bare metal and that's shining through. 
I'm going to do that on a much later stage. For now, I'm just going to concentrate on all the bare essentials to get it to a tabletop standard, and it's not really necessary just yet. Now, normally at this stage, I would get my purity seal out and I would give it a good coat just to protect all these layers. What I'm going to do first, though, is to do all my details, such as the spades and the ammo boxes and cabling, little bits like that. Then it will be my kind of tabletop standard, and then I will seal it with the purity spray. That's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions or queries, drop me below in the comment section. And if you want to keep in touch and follow this series of videos, hit that subscribe button. Until the next video, take care.